It's time for more Manifesting Original Rich Bitch Experiences. Each week, we're talking travel, wellness, and millennial musings with a level of refinement. What level? It fucking depends. I'm your host, Ava Bilkey. Hello. Today, I wanted to talk about social media detoxing. And social media detoxing is when you intentionally reduce your consumption and use of social media. Now, we spend a lot of time on the internet. And I have found through personal experience that the more time you spend online, the more likely it is that you may want to do a social media detox. And this is something that I have built into my personal practice for many years now. And this is something that was born out of necessity. So as someone who has had a 12-year career in social media marketing, creating boundaries and creating healthy habits around my own personal social media use and consumption is quite literally the only way that I have been able to have a career in this field for so long. Uh, So I wanted to share the ways in which I find social media detoxing to be super helpful, the ways in which I go about it. And so you can try it on and see if this improves your overall relationship to social media and also perhaps your mental health and quite literally your well-being. So Social media is intended to be a positive experience. It is a place of inspiration, motivation, education, and entertainment. And if you are not feeling one or perhaps a collection of all of those things after you spend time online, that's how you know it is time for a social media detox. On the flip side, you can also look for indicators of your daily experience on these apps that would also say, hey, you might want to consider this. So if you find yourself spending time on social media and feeling frustrated, or you're feeling triggered by somebody, or you're feeling just general anxiety, um, another one is starting to look around at other people. If you notice yourself comparing to maybe other people that do the same type of work as you um, or people you look up to, maybe you're crossing that line of like unhealthy comparison. These can also be really great indicators that you are ready for a social media detox. So in order to bring your experience back into balance and actually use social media for the benefits and eliminate some of those stressors that can really create a negative experience. I like to recommend three different levels of social media detoxing. So the first level of social media detox that I recommend is cleaning up your consumption. And so what this looks like is sitting down and deciding what do I want to see? What type of content do I want to see when I am in Instagram or when I'm on TikTok or when I'm on YouTube? And from there, looking at what types of accounts, who and what you follow, and then actually going into those follower lists and either muting or unfollowing those brands, businesses, people that don't ultimately deliver the types of content or the type of experience you want to have online. So the way in which I like to do this is actually by creating what I like to call a yes and a no thank you list. So again, thinking about what do I want to see online? So for me, when I make my yes list, some of the things that I want to see on social media are travel-related content, um, fashion-related content, food, recipes, uh, musicians, artists that I like, and friends. So if somebody doesn't fit into one of those categories, 
or maybe they used to, but their content has kind of shifted, I will actually go in on a regular basis and unfollow the accounts that don't fit my yes list. On the flip side, you can look at things that you know for sure that you don't want to see. So it could be, and for me, this looks like news channels. I don't want to actually get any news when I'm on Instagram. I've decided that this for me is a place of inspiration and creativity only. So I actually went in recently and unfollowed all of the media outlets that I used to get updates from on Instagram. This could be um, types of accounts that you just find yourself like spending too much time looking at. So maybe it's like meme accounts that you're like, I really love these, but man, like I'm just rabbit holing, like I am digging into these. It traps me on the app. Um, and then also looking at the personal connections. And this is this is one that gets tricky for a lot of people. So knowing when or who you can can I say, which is funny. It's like, you can do whatever the hell you want, but who you can actually like go of or unfollow, or maybe you just mute them. But I think we feel pressure a lot of times to one, follow back people that follow us and two, keep connections with people who aren't necessarily in your life anymore. So Think like distant connections. Maybe they're people you went to high school with. Maybe they're like friends of exes. If you don't engage with these people on a regular basis, or if you haven't seen them or talked to them in a year, go ahead and unfollow those accounts. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And again, unfollowing an account or somebody it doesn't mean that you can't talk to them, right? You're simply just saying, I don't want to subscribe to this feed and have this automatically populate on my social streams. And this is a really healthy exercise to do on a rolling basis. Um, And although it might feel a little harsh if you haven't done this before, you're going to feel so much better once you actually clean up your your feeds of the content you consume and frankly you're not even going to remember those like distant third ring connections that you used to follow anyways because chances are you're not engaging with them so this is what i like to call kind of the first level of social media detoxing that you can do if you know that you're in a place where You desire to have a more positive experience on social channels, and you're not quite sure how to do that. Um, Cleaning up what you consume is a great first step, and do it continually on an ongoing basis. The next way to implement a level of social media detox is by looking at the total time you spend on social media platforms and then deciding how much you would like to reduce that time by. Now, everyone has a different norm. And again, for someone like me who has a career that is very heavily steeped in spending time on these platforms, chances are that my total time spent online on a daily or weekly basis is always going to be higher. That's just sort of the nature of the beast for me at this point in my life. Um, But I think everyone can look at the total time they spend online and say, you know what, does this align with where I'm at right now? Does this help me get to where I'm going? Or could I really benefit from shaving 30 minutes a day off of the time I spend on TikTok and putting it towards that project that I want to work on? or reading a book that I've been trying to work through. It's thinking about the time trade-offs in terms of what you're doing online and what else you would like to be doing. So I'm going to call myself out here. I spend about, I average nine hours a day on my devices. Um, I hate that for me. And... <laughs> It's been an ongoing struggle to really reduce that because, again, a lot of what I do revolves around being online. 
However, I have found that when I intentionally pull back on the amount of time I spend in my free time, I feel so much better. So the way in which you can, first of all, check and just see like how much time you're spending on these apps. Um, if you have an iPhone or if you have an Android there, you can go into the, your settings and actually get a full report of your screen time and a breakdown of what the percentages are of like how much time you spent on Instagram, how much time you spent on TikTok, how much time you spent on Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So first level of awareness is actually looking at that report. That's going to tell you just where you're at. And chances are good that that's going to be a very strong motivator for you to reduce your time. Now, how can we actually reduce our time spent online when we know these platforms are trying to show us everything we love to keep us online longer? I recommend looking at one, setting time caps on your specific apps. So if you decide that normally you want to spend or normally you spend like two hours a day on Instagram, but you'd rather spend one day, you can actually go into Instagram settings and set up a notification when you hit that hour. Um, Similarly, you can set up the same type of notifications on your phone itself to do the same thing. So that is the first recommendation. After that, I like to look at, I call it like day parting. And this is essentially deciding when you're going to spend time online or when you're going to spend time offline. So for me personally, I make it a goal to not look at social media until after I have done my complete morning routine. So that means I am waking up, I'm doing my morning meditation, I'm doing my morning journaling pages, and I'm having a full cup of coffee before I open any social media apps. And so that is a practice that has really helped me create a healthy boundary. Um, And I especially love protecting your time first thing in the morning and also right before you go to bed because we are so impressionable and I have had so many dreams based off of like random social media posts that I have consumed right before going to bed. And it's like, you know what? I'd like to control my destiny a little bit more and like maybe dream about something different, right? So protecting your time first thing in the morning and last thing at night is a really great way to just start playing around with that day parting. You could also do the inverse where you're like, I'm actually only going to spend these specific hours online. So maybe you use social media for your business or your personal brand, and it's super important that you are there on a regular basis, but you say instead, okay, I'm actually going to do all of my social media engaging, consuming, posting, auditing, all the things between a certain set of hours. So maybe it's from 2 to 4 p.m. each day, you allow yourself that social media time. So it's thinking about how you want to work this into your calendar and actually taking the next step to put it on the books. I know for me, if I don't write something down either on my list of to-dos for the day or if I don't have something on my calendar, I quite literally forget that I even had this idea, right? Right oh, I was really going to start that social media detox today, but like it's not on the calendar. So take that extra step then once you've decided where you want to kind of day part or designate social media consumption or offline time, and then plug that into your calendar to make sure that you actually follow through on that. And you might be thinking like, Ava, this sounds like a lot of like very formal official work for social media, but trust me. (laughs) After 12 years of trial, um, I can tell you that this is what it takes to actually stick to it. The third level of social media detox, if you have already cleaned up the the consumption, you've cleaned up who you're following, the types of posts that you see every day, you're really sticking to your daily calendar of when you're on or offline, and you still feel like you just need a break, The next level of social media detox is doing a full-blown social media vacation. And what I mean by this is quite literally taking 
an extended period of time offline. And you get to decide how much time that is. So maybe it's 24 hours and you just experiment with spending the entire Saturday off social media. Or maybe it is a weekend. Maybe it's three days. Maybe you just try it for one week. And then afterwards, you're like, great, like I'm ready to get back online. It could be something longer too. It could be a full month off. You get to decide how much time you need, but don't be afraid to take a social media vacation. We hear a lot of things about consistency on social media. In order to build a following, you have to be consistent. In order to maintain a healthy engagement rate, you have to be consistent, right? And these things are true, but I encourage you to look about consistency over a longer period of time. So we're not talking about consistency over two weeks, right? And then just completely burning out. We're talking about how can you maintain a healthy relationship with social media so that you can benefit from it, growing awareness of yourself, your business, your offerings, your connections over the long run. We're talking years, right? Because social media is still around. We're all still here. So don't be afraid to take that social media vacation. I promise you that 30 days away in the long run, in the span of your life is quite literally nothing. And all of the people that love you are going to be there when you come back and you are going to be able to reestablish all those connections you had and life is going to go on. I promise you. So please, if you feel like you need that, take it because we are playing the long game here. So those are my three levels of social media detoxing that have really helped me throughout my career online. And I hope that these also help you because again, social media is not supposed to be something that makes you feel like shit about yourself. It is not supposed to be something that you are just like absolutely stressing over. It should add some level of value to your life. And if it doesn't, it's time to mix things up. Now, I recently took my social media detox to the next level, which is, I guess the next level is like a full digital detox. So social media is of course where we spend a ton of time, but we're also consuming content through other digital devices. We have the computer, we have TV, we have podcasts, we have music, we have all of these inputs that we are constantly being exposed to. And at the end of 2022, right after the holidays, like I was feeling so completely just exhausted. My nervous system was taxed and I felt this really strong pull to quite literally disappear. Like I just wanted to go and sit in a cave and not talk to anybody. I didn't want to like nothing. And so I actually took 36 hours and did a full digital detox. And so during that time, I did not look at my phone. Um, I woke up in the morning. I left my phone in my bedroom all day. Didn't bring it around with me. Didn't check anything. Um, I didn't send any, I did it over a weekend. So I didn't send any text messages. I didn't look at my emails. And I actually went a step further because I felt like I literally couldn't hear my own thoughts. And so I didn't listen to any music. And I love, like, I'm always listening to something when I'm at home. I didn't listen to any music. I didn't listen to any podcasts. I didn't watch any Netflix. Like, I did a full blown digital detox. And let me tell you, after 36 hours, I wasn't even ready to come back. I was like, this is heaven. I want to stay here as long as I can. Um, and I stayed there until Monday morning and reality came back into play, you know, shit had to happen, but 
I couldn't even tell you, like, I don't even think I did anything. Like I quite literally stared into space. I did read a book. Um, but you know, that's not digital. I, it was a paper, a uh, physical book. And I just spent time with myself. I journaled and I gave myself time to think about absolutely nothing or everything. And it was so nice. So I offer that up because if you have done a fair share of social media detoxing and you're like, I don't know, it's just not enough. Like it's not working for me. Take it to the next level and actually do a digital detox. It feels so good. And I can't wait until I can do this again, because again, like it just, it made me feel so much better. And I came back more energized. I had more clarity. I was actually excited to, you know, respond to my emails and my text messages and chat with people. Like I had this renewed energy for quite literally just engaging with other people. And that is something that is so critical. And I think it's so easy to look at, you know, we have this incredible technology and I think it's easy to get into a place of resentment or taking it for granted because we are so connected that it's almost a lot. It's more than humans were wired for, right? But it's also a beautiful thing. So if you can take time away and then come back and have renewed gratitude for like how fucking cool it is that we can actually talk to our friends halfway across the world through free social media apps, like for me, that's just a win-win. And it just, I think it's really healthy for our well-being to have these moments where we do allow ourselves a break because it's a lot. It is a lot. So those are my thoughts on social media and digital detoxing. I would love to know if you try this, how it resonates with you, how you were feeling before, how you're feeling after, um, reach out, send me a DM. And, um, I hope that this helps moving on to this week's love it or leave it. I am absolutely loving the entire week I had. So last week I shared with you that it was my birthday. You know, we can't forget. (laughs) Um, and I had a list of ways to celebrate a bad bitch birthday. I did quite literally like three fourths of this list. So I had so many thoughtful DMS, text messages from friends. I was feeling the love a hundred percent. I took the time to not work. That's rule number one. We don't work on our birthdays. So I did take the day off and I got my hair colored and cut, which is just one of the best feelings in the world. Um, I went out to dinner at one of my favorite restaurants, um, with some loved ones. I baked myself that delicious chocolate cake with chocolate buttercream frosting. And I've been like living off of it all weekend. Um, I took some time to zoom and chat with friends and I also got a facial. And so I loved the entire week. It just felt like such a nice, it felt special. And I think that's the important thing about birthdays. So I'm loving that all of that happened. Um, like, so, and I think I've shared this with you before, but like, I'm kind of new to the whole like facial thing in terms of like getting a regular treatment. Um, I got a facial the day before my birthday and like in this facial, there was a peel. Okay. And I was like, yeah, cool. Like that sounds great. Yeah, let's do it. But I quite literally did not like register the term peel. Um, and I didn't realize that all of my skin would be peeling off. Like, and I get that it's a good thing, right? Like the dead skin cells, the dull layer on top is peeling off. And after this peel process, like there's going to be a lovely refreshed dewy glow. Like I know it's coming, but what I'm leaving this week is the fact that like this, the skin peel itself, the process of it is not cute. 
Like I have had like flakes every time I put on a shirt. Like I have like skin flakes on my fucking shirt. Um, I have been like bathing in like rich moisturizer and it's just, I mean, wind, I'm, I guess I'm asking and I'm leaving behind the actual peel, but I like, when does it stop? When, how long is the peel peeling? That's what I'd like to know because Mm, I think it's important to plan your life around, <laughs> around this peel. And I frankly just did not see it coming. So I'm leaving behind the fact that I feel like a shedding reptile. I'm like a shedding snake, actually. Um, I'm leaving that look behind, but I'm also very much looking forward to the end result um, whenever that day comes. Okay. I think that's all I've got. Life is good. I cannot complain. Um, thank you so much for listening. As always, if you do the detox, let me know, send me a DM at the more pod on Instagram. Um, leave a five-star review and tell me how it went in the comments and I will talk to you next week. Listen to the More Pod every Wednesday as I share the things that make me more me and discover a thing or two to make you more you.